the morning. We're going to switch to Gerald Salente on the line in a moment. Uh, Gerald Salente, if you don't know him, he's a publisher of um, a publication called the Trends Journal from his uh, corporate office in Kingston, New York. The Trends Journal goes all over the world. And some of the biggest names in politics and world leaders subscribe to the Trends Journal. Gerald Salente uh, was written about by the Wall Street Journal. You, you have perhaps read his books. Maybe you see the Trends Journal quoted in the uh, Wall Street Journal or most any other publication, sometimes on television news. But Gerald Salente doesn't really like television news. The main Gerald Salente is my guest, by the way, and he publishes the Trends Journal... You study trends and then make a, a forecast based on what you call facts rather than using looking at the emotional circumstance of today. Exactly. I began my career in the late 1970s when Jimmy Carter came back from Iran after spending New Year's Eve with the Shah and his wife, Ian Rosalind. And he came back and told the American people that the Shah was the island of stability in the Middle East. And I knew it was a lot of baloney. I knew this thing was going to fall because I'd been following it for years. I knew how the United States and England overthrew the democratically elected government, the Mossadegh in 53, how they put up this Shah, who was this evil dick. He was a dictator. You know, they had the Savak, the secret police. You know, it was this brutal dictatorship. So when I saw millions of people taking to the streets and not leaving... I said, oh, this is going to be real. I became a political atheist at that when Carter spoke those words. And then I realized, what will be the implications? And I started investing in gold and oil futures. I was a young guy. I didn't know what I was doing. And I made enough money to quit my job and begin the Trends Research Institute by understanding that current events form future trends. But people get caught up in the emotions of their belief systems. If you go to a doctor, Orv, you don't care if it's a man or a woman, black, white, yellow. You don't care about the religion. You want the diagnosis. Yeah. We've lost the ability to look at things objectively because we color them, we race them. Yeah, we, we have put, we our put, own filters, yeah. Exactly. So people will say, I'm pro-Israeli. I'm pro-nothing. You um, correctly predicted the economic slump of uh, 2008, amongst others. Yeah, that I began my career. I got notoriety when I called the panic of uh, the uh, crash of 1987. The Wall Street Journal wrote sure, about it. Sure. And, and now you're predicting uh, another market tumble. Yes. The only thing that's keeping this market up are record low interest rates. Period. Paragraph. End of story. Record interest rates in the United States. Yeah, you could, if I said to you, I got a better one, or if we're going to do negative interest rates, you'd say Salenti's out of his mind. Yeah. Well, that's what they have in, in the European Central Bank, negative interest rates. They're filling these hedge funds and banks with cheap money. And with that cheap money, they're doing major deals. And they're keeping the stock market afloat. Merger and acquisition activity, Orv, in the first six months of this year is equal to that of 2007, just before the panic hit. And so you see that as one of the trends. Yes. When interest rates go up, the economy goes down. End of story. End of story. Your, um, your current, most current uh, trends journal has... A most fascinating story. Uh, several pages under the title, I don't care. You say what that's... We're, yeah, what we're saying is they don't blame Obamacare. Blame I don't care. Look what this nation's become. You know, look what it used to be. Look how when people... You know, I remember as a young guy flying, and, and, and you had to... You know, you didn't have to, but, you know, people got dressed when they got on airplanes. It was an occasion. Now it's a flying circus. They come like pigs. You, you go to the, the theater. You know, people used to dress up. Now it looks like they just got out of their garage and were cleaning it up. You go to, uh, you go to a fine restaurant. I remember when you had to wear a jacket, men did. And people were dressed and they behaved in a decorum, in a, in a way that fit the decorum. 
And now you hear conversations from three tables away, and people come in dressed like slobs. You go up and down the line. You go to ball games. I remember when, you know, I grew up in the Bronx. I used to go to Yankee games. And a bunch of us kids, got my, my mother, make sure you get dressed, dress yourself nice. You know, and you go there, and people would, I remember, like, all the adults were wearing hats when I was a kid. You know, so everything has gone down, and then the weight has gone way up. We're the most obese nation in the world. We're making the point that you can have the, we do have the most expensive health care system. It's not going to make any difference. Obesity is going to be the highest cost factor of our society than anything else. It's going to outpace cancer as the most costly detriment to our health care system because of all the negative effects. Look, when we were kids... There was no such thing as people riding down the aisles of supermarkets on electric cars because they're too heavy to walk. There was no such thing as type 2 diabetes among children. There was no such thing when you look at the, the Frank Sinatra's, the Cary Grant's, the, uh, the Ella Fitzgerald's, and you compare them to, to Miley Cyrus, or Siley Myers, whatever her name is. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin Bieber and the rest. It's a freak show. You, um, in, in your I Don't Care article, you have what you call a trend post. You say, look at the top. Our political and corporate leaders may be dressed well, but the downward spiral of their collective moral character has brought them epic lows. And most of Americans know it. Look at the latest poll that came out. What is it, like only 8% of the people have faith in Congress? The president's, rec the president's approval rec levels are record lows? So what is it? Now, you've studied history, you study society, you study politics and government and world events, etc. What is it that has caused this? It goes back to immorality. What causes immorality? A lot of different things. Look, if I, if you, I told you I'm a, as you well know, I'm a political atheist. Yes. I don't believe in either party. Yeah. And I would, and I would, and I'm not saying this sarcastically. To me, both parties are no different than the Bloods and the Crips. They're mass murderers and they're thieves. How many more wars do they have to start based on lies? How many more millions of people have to be killed? There's all this information coming out now, which is old news, but again coming out, about how Secretary of Defense McNamara lied to LBJ about the Gulf of Tonkin incident. It never happened the way it did. The United States was not attacked. But that was the, that was the, the spark that set off the Vietnam War, for which our soldiers that fought there are still suffering, those that came back alive, mm -hmm. 58,000 dead. Three million Vietnamese killed and their country poisoned with Agent Orange. The war against Iraq, one million, you look at the numbers, anywhere between 750,000 to 1.5 million people killed on a war that there were no weapons of mass destruction at ties to Al-Qaeda. You look at the lies that were told to us about the too big to fails, I said they're thieves. They stole our money and gave it to their banker friends so that they could become even bigger. It's immorality. The fish rots from the head down. And people are watching what's going on, and they're mimicking the, ma the behavior from the top. Can it change? Yes, I truly believe it can. When the individual spirit changes. I'll give you an example. As you know, now the crisis going the, the, the crisis going on in um, Iraq between Israel and oh, Gaza. Sure. And so I start doing you know I've known about it a long time, of course, and I start doing more and more research because I came up with the understanding. You know, when people say when I point out the atrocities going on there, right away the knee jerk reaction is to call me an anti semite. For the record, my last three girlfriends were Jewish, and most of our staff is. So just, I'm not an anti-Semite. So okay. then I, because you know me, I'll criticize anything, you know, uh -huh. if I don't believe in it. And you know the motto of the Trends Journal, think for yourself. I don't tell anybody what to believe. I don't need anybody to tell me what to believe. Show me the facts, and I could look at them. Sure. So anyway, 
I realized that you cannot call people that are not from that area, they're not Semites. The Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister, Golda Meir, Perez, Omer, uh, Begin, Netanyahu, all of the prime ministers of Israel are Ashkenazi, essentially German Jews. So I started looking up, you know, when they, they came up with the idea that, you know, they had to go to, to Israel, and of course it, the Zionist movement. And it was started by Theodore Herzl. And I'm going to get back to your point. And I started reading about him. He was from Budapest, by the way. And I realized they, they write it in Wikipedia that he was the father of Zionism. And I thought to myself, I said, look at this. One person made a difference. Agree or disagree with him is not the issue. One person made a difference. So you asked me, can it be changed? Yes. When everybody does their part for morality. With all of these atrocities going on in the world, whether it's in Iraq, whether it's in, in Gaza, whether it's in Yemen, whether it's in Syria, whether it's in Somalia, Sudan, wherever it is, it's going to take the people to reverse it. Because I can tell you, as a trend forecaster, we are on the path of war and the, world war. The we I wrote, you, about, I wrote about this before. The, the we, that's an editorial, we. Well, who, who are we? We are every individual who finds the dignity, courage, and self-respect to do what they do, can do to change the, where we're heading. Okay. You don't, the leadership is going to lead us to disaster. President Obama has now ordered more troops. They have another 700 troops in Afghanistan, and they're doing bombing runs. Oh, that's going to fix things really great. Who caused this problem? How did the problem occur? Oh, we overthrew Saddam Hussein. Well, forget about that. Let's just go on and create more destruction. They're talking about ISIS. You know who ISIS is? These are the groups that are being funded by the Arab League that were put in place to overthrow the Assad government in Syria. They're why, maniacs. Why does the media not tell us this? Because the media are prostitutes. The media are suck-ups and brown noses and bow-downs. The fourth estate is dead. The media is owned by a handful of major corporations thanks to the deregulation under slick Willie Clinton of the Federal Communications Act that allowed a few companies to own everything, and it's in their interest to push their agendas. I have a belief that, when, uh, that we are not being served well by government, and when that happens, when society gets that feeling, society has, over history, turned them out, changed the governors, those who govern us. But who are you going to vote for? A Republican <laughs> or a Democrat? It doesn't matter. Is exactly. What you're saying. Yeah, okay. Okay. Interesting. We, ha point. we have to, you know, as, you're t as we're talking, I am looking across the street. I'm in Colonial Kingston, and I'm looking at the county courthouse. John Jay was a juror in this courthouse. Four Supreme Court justices out of this courthouse. The 1777 Senate House, the oldest public open building in the United States, a stone's throw away from me. Every one of the founding fathers warned us. Not these commanders in chief that play it on TV, but have never fought a real war in their life. Washington, Franklin, Jefferson, Adams, Madison, no foreign entanglements. And... Um you suggest that's the right way now. I believe in what this country was founded upon. I believe in the principles that it was founded upon. And every foreign entanglement we have been in since World War II has only brought more disaster. Tell me one victory. The school of thought, though, amongst many, is that um, we're a world society. We were a world society back then. Wars were going on all over the place. 
And matter of fact, one person said to me, well, you know, back then, you had France and England were the major powers in the West. I said, yeah, right after that, France had a revolution following ours. No foreign entanglements. The people in Detroit can't pay their water bills. You have, you have people... That we, oh, Median household income is down 36% in the United States since 2003. Elderly people have worked all of their lives, can't pay their property or school taxes, are being thrown out of their homes. Our infrastructure is rotted. We have immigrants flooding over the borders. They can't stop them. Did you predict that, by the way? You can go back to my book, Trends 2000. I wrote that chapter and verse in Trends 2000. And if you like, I could read it to you. No, that's fine. We're, we're, we're going to run out of time here shortly. Uh, you, you mentioned a book, uh, and I've talked about Trends Journal. Let's make sure we get a plug in to say where we can get Trends Journal. How do you find that? Trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And as you know, it's 50 pages full color photos not one advertisement it is the only magazine in the world where you will read history before it happens and i have to tell you uh, or i've been at this 35 years now is the time to prepare and prevail to survive because things are going to get ugly geopolitically and economically it's in the news it's in everybody's face quickly soon <sighs> It could happen at any moment. You could see how quickly we go to war. We did a story in this Trends Journal where I broke down President Bush's speech, George Bush's speech, on the eve of 9-11 and nine days later. And I began it with only a madman would speak these words and only people dumbstruck with fear would believe them. It was a comic book speech, but people were so fearful. He even used the phrase, a man by the name of Osama bin Laden is out, you know, and, and, and it was a, and people without having one fact in front of them, we went off to war. Bush's popularity rating went from 51 percent before 9/11 to 90 percent after 9/11. You're seeing the same thing happening in Israel. Netanyahu's popularity rating has gone up 25% since that war has started. People go off to war. They, again, they light us into the Iraq War, the Vietnam War, in a, in a flash of a, a, a gun. People will be rallying around the president again if they are told it's terrorism, false flag, or real. We are off on the path to war. In fact, the first great war of the 21st century has begun. You, uh, you, you published the Trends Journal from your home, your office, your home office there in Kingston, New York. You also travel the country speaking? Oh, yes, sure. You're available? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I do a lot of talks around, around the world, actually. Trendsjournal.com is the way to contact you. Yes, trendsjournal.com. Gerald Salente, my guest, one of the reasons I like talking to you is... You not only have knowledge, you have opinions, which are really kind of fun to listen to, and I appreciate you. Thank you, Gerald Salente, for taking time to be with me today. Thank you, Orv.